I'm Tynisa Nelson, and guess what? It's Monday. We're gonna talk about two of my favorite things, plants and wine. Who doesn't like getting drunk off of $25 and under wine? This girl does. So let's get this episode started. Today's episode is about a Swiss cheese vine and Williamette Valley Vineyards. It's a Pinot Noir, and so let's get this open and get really drunk. In this episode, I was recommended a Williamette Valley Vineyards. It's called a Whole Cluster Pinot Noir, and it's located in Oregon. That's where they ferment their grapes. And I'm really excited to give this a go. I actually opened it right before, but I haven't tasted it yet. I'm really excited to try it out. So let's get it open and taste it out. Who doesn't like that? It smells really good. Mm, ready for it. I already like the color of it. I, I really enjoy deep reds that are already just like, ooh, I'm definitely drinking a red and I'm feeling real fancy and I really like that about it. So I'm gonna try it and shut the fuck up. Mm. Every episode I will rate the wine and Swiss cheese vine or any plants that are recommended one through five. One for wine disgusting, I hate it, I'm never gonna drink it again, or five, I'm gonna keep my fridge stocked, or if it doesn't belong in the fridge, on my wall. Then, for plants, I'm gonna rate one through five, one being very beginner, or five, expert, you're gonna kill it, RIP to those plants, because some, that needs to be for someone that isn't so novice. So let's get to rating these plants and wine. So in today's episode, I'm actually featuring my beautiful spouse, and she's actually gonna give this a try and see how she likes it outside of me because I already am a little bit biased because I enjoy Pinot Noirs. So let's get her feedback on if she likes this and what she would rate it. <laughs> so on this episode, I have Devin, my beautiful spouse. She's going to actually rate this one through five. One being absolutely disgusting. She hates it so much. She's never gonna let me purchase it again. Or five, she loves it so much. She's going to support my habits. So, dark. <laughs> give it a go and tell me what you think about it, honey. Cheers. <laughs> what do you think? Um, it's pretty good. I like dark reds, generally um, a little spicy. This is maybe like an easy drink for somebody who's never had a Pinot Noir before. What would you rate it? Probably like a three. Mm. I would most likely, <laughs> such a creepy thought. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would probably buy it again. Do I need it? No, I'd probably get something else, like, regularly stocked. But Damn, Williamette, you need to get your shit together. I said I would buy it again. Well, I mean, that's this face, when you see this face, <laughs> she, she's not 100% on board. It'll make you drunk, I guess. And like I said, easy drink for somebody who's, like, newly introduced maybe to, like, red wine. You're not, like, really sure what you're getting into. This is, like, something that won't, like, bite you when you drink it. But I want my wines to bite Ooh. <laughs> well, very scary. <laughs> <laughs> On to my I review. I regret everything. <laughs> so you guys got her rating. She clearly only thought this was a three. I actually like it a little more than she does. Would I also say it was a five? Absolutely not. But I would definitely say it's maybe a 3.5. I have to always one up. You're gonna do half systems? Yep, I'm doing a half system. <laughs> we are adding that to the rating, okay? But honey, we never cheers before we drink, and so that's highly rude. So I'm you can get a little bit more of this. Well, yeah, that's the point, right? You need to drink the alcohol percentage. We're here to get drunk. Drunk girl vibes. Salud. <laughs> Hello, guy. You're making your YouTube debut. So whenever I was doing my research on this um, vineyard, I found that they were actually rated number one in Oregon for several different types of their wine, and the Pinot Noir came up as one of the best. Um, I think it was pretty darn good. Um, it's tasty, it's a great one for um, an everyday drink. It's definitely not the fanciest of wines, but I don't think really anything under $25 may be considered fancy, but um, 
In my last episode, the Mayomi definitely had a lot more body to it. This one is a little lighter, like Devin said. It still has the deep red effect. Doesn't have the spice after the end, which is also a favorite of mine. Um, but it's still pretty good. It's a great one that you can bring out when you're having a picnic, you're enjoying some cheese, charcuterie. Um, it, it's a great go-to. Now we're gonna talk about the Swiss cheese vine plant. One of my faves in my home. Swiss cheese vine. She is so beautiful. Her vines go for a very long time. Um, they just keep going and going and going. But she's so beautiful, and you can tell why I love her so very much. Monasteras in general are my favorite type of plant for our home. Um, I have a couple different versions of Monasteras. Um, but this one is famously known as the Swiss cheese vine because it looks like a Swiss cheese and it vines. So here's how to keep your Swiss cheese vine alive. Make sure that you have proper drainage holes. Drainage holes just help to make sure that the water can go all the way through and so that you don't develop root rot or anything like that. Um, another great way to keep your Swiss cheese vine alive is to make sure that you have a, a standard soil that you can find from your local nursery, green acres, etc., um, that have peat in it, which I'll explain what peat is in the description box below and a little note right here. Number two. A great way to keep your Swiss cheese vine alive is watering. The Swiss cheese vine likes to be watered, you know, consistently, which makes it a little difficult because if you overwater her and she becomes soggy, then it'll start to kill your plant. And a way to actually know that and actually have a good example of what that looks like is the yellowing of the leaves. I actually recently overwatered her just a little bit too much. And you can see, I don't know if you guys can see this, she kind of sticks to everything. Um, she has this yellow guy right here. Um, and that is a great way to also tell if you're overwatering her. Thankfully, I caught it early enough and we took back the water a little bit and she seems to be doing a lot better. Number three. Monasteras or Swiss cheese vines or any type of monastera actually is really well known to be toxic. And especially if you are like me who loves your fur babies so very much, they're like my children, um, you have to be mindful to make sure that these are in places where they can't eat the leaves because my cats definitely love to eat our, the plant leaves and it can cause a lot of irritation, diarrhea, vomiting, etc. And you don't want that for your little fur baby. So that's a, just another side tip and a number three on this list of keeping your Monastera or Swiss cheese vine alive. Number four, propagation. Propagation is important because, you know, a Swiss cheese vine can spread like wildfire. So a great way to propagate her is to make sure that you are cutting the vine where two nodes are. And I actually have done that recently here. As you can see, you can just place her into a bottle of water. And as you can tell, she has some new growth right here. She's very excited, she's thriving. And then boom, you have a new plant. So onto rating the Swiss cheese vine. One being beginner, five being expert, RIP. So what I would vote this as is probably a number two. The reason why I would vote this a number two is because of the watering. The watering is a little difficult to gauge because she likes to be consistently watered and because you, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's soggy or not. Um, so that would be the reason why I would vote this a number two on the beginners list. And if you guys like these recommendations that I am giving you throughout these episodes, make sure that you click the subscribe button and let's get to drinking some more. Cheers. See you guys next time.